I'm pretty sure my dog just ate another dog's turd this morning. Yeah, I don't know, man. He was eating something. I opened up his mouth. It looked like poop. It smelled like poop. I gagged, I think, for about five minutes. I almost puked myself, but what do you do? Ugh. Anyway, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to my week 12 NFL reactions. First and foremost, I hope you guys all had a happy and safe Thanksgiving. It was a great holiday for me. I got to see my friends. I got to see my family. It was a ton of fun. But now we're back to business. We're back to football and we just had a crazy week. So before we get into it, I got a couple of quick plugs as always. So first off, head over to gfuel.com. Use code Wyatt's World. Save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. Secondly, if you're 18 years or older, you can head over to Prize Picks, the daily fantasy app or code Wyatt's World to match up to $100 of your first deposit. And lastly, if you're trying to hook your parents up with some awesome, unique gifts for the holiday season, head over to the link in my bio at parentpresence.com for the ultimate Christmas gift list of 2022. All right, enough with the jibber jabber. Let's get into my reactions. All right, so kicking off week 12 with the first Thursday game, we had the Bills at the Lions and the Bills narrowly beat them 28 to 25. Look, the Lions are a good team. If you're still sleeping on them, you gotta stop, man. Much as people wanna give Jared Goff a hard time, he didn't do that bad. Jamal Williams continues to be a touchdown machine. Amon St. Brown's the top receiver in the league, nine receptions, 120 yards and a touchdown. They have an extremely capable offense. The major thing that haunts the Lions, it's haunted them for a long time and it's continuing to haunt them this year, is the defense. They only have two Two, three key players who are rarely ever healthy at the same time. And that weighs them down, man, tremendously. As far as the Bills, Josh Allen struggled throughout the game, but at the end, he came alive and showed that he still is the elite Josh Allen. Delivered a hell of a bullet to Stefan Diggs in traffic, which he somehow caught while being hit. I don't know, it was crazy. Receivers were looking good. Isaiah McKenzie was the leader, but him and Diggs both logged in a touchdown on the day. And defensively, we might have lost Von Miller, which absolutely sucks because, you know, they have to have turf. But the Bills remain 6 0 using Jordan Poyer and Ed. Oliver was clearly the player of the game. Also, Matt Milano is probably a top five linebacker in football right now, but nobody's going to say it, so that's fine. All right, moving on to the second Thanksgiving game. We have the Giants at the Cowboys. Weirdly, we lost the broadcast of this game for like three quarters of it, so that sucked and I missed majority of it. But judging by the box score, New York kept it interesting for the first half. And honestly, when I look at this offense, the fact that the Giants put up 20 points on the Dallas defense, that's just impressive. You got Daniel Jones, who played a fair game. Saquon, who other than his touchdown, was reasonably contained. And then his receivers, who continue to be people I've never heard of outside of Darius Slayton. I'm pretty sure the Giants have declined Danny's next year option, but honestly, I think he's earned himself another year of play. As far as Dallas goes, obviously they won the game. I have no concerns about their defense, but I do have one concern about their offense, and that is Dak Prescott. I know in the Vikings game he came alive, but it was the week before, and it's this week, where he's throwing multiple interceptions in a game. He doesn't look like himself. He looks impatient and he looks panicked. He doesn't look like the Dak Prescott that they're paying $40 million a year for. Not sure what it is. Maybe it's just a slow start because he had the hand injury, but you got to think Dak has to start coming around a little bit more consistently than what this is if Dallas wants to make a push. Moving on, we got the Patriots at the Vikings. Oh, the controversy, the controversy, the controversy. This game basically boils down to one play. Did Hunter Henry catch it? Two sides are going to have two different stories. The Vikings will say no. The Patriots will say yes. I sit on both sides of it, man. It looked like he had possession when he hit the ground, but the ball absolutely did move. So I, you flip a coin. Anyway, Mac Jones had probably one of the better games of his career, going 382 for two touchdowns and zero picks. Devontae Parker, four for 80. Ramondre Stevenson, nine for 76. Nelson Aguilar, six for 65 and a touchdown. Hunter Henry, three for 63 and a touchdown. Maybe should have been two. The Patriots' offense was absolutely present during this game. It's just their, their defense wasn't, aside from Jonathan Jones and his interception. Also, how about them primetime Kirk Cousins haters? What are you guys going to say about him this game? That was as primetime as you could have gotten. That was smack down the main event of Thanksgiving. And he completed 30 for 37 passes, threw for 299 yards in three touchdowns. Shut the fuck up. Our passing game is lethal, man. I know our defense is bad, but we're taking the route that Miami is. It's fuck the defense. We'll just outscore you. All right, and moving on to Sunday, we have the Texans at the Dolphins. This will be short and sweet because it's the Texans. They suck. Why did Damian Pierce have five carries? Jesus. Yeah, it's great to see that Kyle Allen was lighting up the receivers. There are five receptions, five receptions, six receptions. But other than that, it's the same damn team. You see Jerry Hughes kicked over a Gatorade container. He's ready to come back to Buffalo. I said it last week. I, it's going to take a lot for this team to be good. And I seriously, I don't even know where to start. Uh, if we look at the Dolphins really quick, kind of a weird day. I thought Tua was going to do a lot better 
than he did. Not that he did bad, but only 299 and one touchdown. I was expecting like 800 yards and four touchdowns. Receivers, they continue to be good and consistent. Tyreek and Jalen, they had that new guy, number 14, Trent Sherfield. He had two great catches that I saw. And their defense did enough to beat the Texans, which means they probably weren't conscious for half of the snaps. Honestly, I think I saw Bradley Chubb playing Minecraft on his phone for half the time he was on the field. You don't have to do anything to beat the Texans. They beat themselves more than a 16-year-old boy does when he discovers a playboy. Moving on, we got the Bengals and the Titans. This was the first game I believe I was wrong on. It was a close game. It was a good game. I, I'm not upset that I'm wrong because I know the Bengals are a good team. I just thought the Titans were going to pull it out. Kind of a weird day for Joe Burrow. He didn't turn the ball over, completed 22 out of 37 for 270 and a touchdown, but he had nine carries with his legs. Obviously, probably has a lot to do with the fact that Joe Mixon's not there and Samaj P. Ryan just isn't as good. Receivers, they were great. T. Higgins had seven for 114. Tyler Boyd was pretty absent, but Hayden Hurst is coming alive. I'm glad to see him finally doing well. Well, I thought he would be excellent when he went to Atlanta and he didn't do shit. Uh, Titans didn't do that bad at all, actually. The stats might not show it, but Tannehill had a fairly clean day, not turning the ball over, but not scoring at all. Derrick Henry, that's the reason the Titans lost right there. He was severely shut down, 17 carries for 38, 2.2 yards a bump. That is historically low for him. But he did have three receptions for 80 yards, and Traylon had four for 70, and Westbrook had four for 60. Why aren't they using Robert Woods anymore, though? Is he just not as good as these guys? I find that hard to believe. Also, kind of crazy the more I look at it, the Titans only sacked Joe Burrow one time, and they didn't have an interception either. For as little as it looks like the defenses did, this game was crazy low scoring, 20 to 16. Moving on, we got the Broncos and the Panthers. <laughs> Oh, I was so right on this one. What did I tell you about Sam Darnold? I said he was going to beat the Broncos, and this whole week, people are going to talk about how he's the guy again. And next time they play, because I don't think they play next week, I think they have a bye, he's going to go out there, and he's going to fucking suck. That doesn't matter yet, though. We can't talk about the future. We got to talk about what just happened, and the Panthers looked actually really good. Sam made a couple of great passes. He made a cool rolling touchdown into the end zone. Uh, rushing was huge. Dante Foreman had 24 carries for 113 yards. Chuba had 17 for 65. Uh, defense was pretty good, too. They didn't have any picks, but Brian Burns had two sacks. Marquise Hayes had one sack. You got 21 tackles between four guys on your team. Definitely deserved to win this game. Like, they all played Denver. Uh, looking over at Denver, it's the most Denver thing ever. Russ is struggling to complete passes. Latavius Murray has completely taken over now since Melvin Gordon's gone, having 13 carries for 92 yards. That's a crazy good day. Sutton had a pretty good game as well, 6 for 75 with the absence of Jerry Judy. But the offense, again, just isn't scoring. Next game we got is the Bears at the Jets, and this one I changed on Twitter. I know I think I picked the Bears on YouTube, but I was under the impression Justin Fields was going to be playing. He wasn't. They had Trevor Simeon and Nathan Peterman on their roster. I did get to see a little bit of this game, and I know Trevor's stats might not show, but he didn't look like he was actually all that terrible, and David Montgomery made a couple of freak plays as well. It's just that without Justin Fields, you're the same old Bears you have been. Chase Claypool did have a ball and catch on Sauce Gardner, though, and that should be recognized. But it's not the story of the game. The story of the game is possibly the New York Jets' new starting quarterback, Mike White, because he did it again. 22 completions out of 28 attempts, 315 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Elijah Moore had a touchdown. Garrett Wilson had five receptions for 95 yards and two touchdowns. This offense is electric when they have someone who's not scared to throw the ball, and I was talking about this on my Twitch. Zach is scared. He's scared to turn over the ball. He's scared to look bad. Mike White doesn't give a shit. He knew that this game was potentially the last game he was ever going to start. That's what it is like as a backup. He goes out there and he lets it fucking rip. He's like Ryan Fitzpatrick. And look what happens. Next up, we have the Falcons at the Commanders, and the Commanders do, in fact, continue to win. Thank you, because I hate Marcus Mariota. I can't say it enough. I hate him. I want him to lose. We'll take a peek at the Commanders here to start it off. Heineke had a Heineke game. Brian Robinson had a great day, of course, after I talked shit about him. 18 carries for 105 yards and 5.8 yards of bump. He also had a receiving touchdown with a really good run on that. I won't ignore it. Uh, Terry was only 4 for 48. John Bates was 3 for 24. Gibson was 3 for 22 on receiving. Kind of slow. Also, Washington's defense continues to come up and generate turnovers, giving them the extra possessions. This week, it was Kendall Fuller with another interception. Flipping over to look at Atlanta. Atlanta, again, looks like Atlanta, although Zacchaeus had five receptions for 91 yards. That's a little bit too good for a Marcus Mariota receiver. Uh, their running committee was actually super good. At a low, they averaged 4.7 yards of bump, so Washington's run D was treacherous. But Atlanta couldn't do anything with it, weirdly, because their running game is usually what gets them points, and it didn't. For those wondering why I hate Marcus Mariota so much, fantasy, it's 100% fantasy, and it will never Never go away. Next up, we had the Bucks at the Browns, and I was wrong on this one. The Buccaneers lost in overtime. 
I mean, the Tampa Bay's offense was not bad by any means. Tom had two passing touchdowns. Chris Godwin had 12 receptions for 110 yards and a tud. But other than Godwin, they, they didn't really do much. The great Cameron Brait was only two for 15. Also, Tampa's D didn't really necessarily do bad either. I think the only bad part of it was when Antoine Winfield got absolutely blocked into oblivion by Jacoby Brissett on Anthony Schwartz's touchdown run. Yeah, one, two, three, uh, about four, five sacks, it looks like. An interception, they had opportunities, they just didn't make it count. Now, the Browns, they played well. Nick Chubb had a great game as usual. 26 carries, 116 rushing yards, a touchdown. Schwartz had the rushing touchdown. Amari caught seven for 94. David Njoku had five for 29 and a tud. Miles Garrett was back, one and a half sacks, being disruptive as fuck. Bad calls, no bad calls. The Browns won this game. After Cleveland, we've got the Ravens at Jacksonville. Game I was wrong on again, barely. Honestly, if you didn't see the end of this game, Justin Tucker kicked a 67-yarder. Me and my dad were setting up the Christmas tree at my parents' house. We both thought he made it. It was nuts. But he came up four or five yards short, and they missed the kick and lost the game by a point. Lamar didn't necessarily do bad. He was kind of inaccurate, but he did make some great throws. He threw a touchdown. He was productive on his legs. 14 carries for 89 yards. Gus the Bus had a touchdown. Josh Oliver had a receiving touchdown of all goddamn people. Deshaun Jackson went back to his old roots. Two receptions for 74 yards. Flip over to the winning team real quick. We can see Trey Trevor had a hell of a day, 29 for 37, 321, and three touchdowns. The run game definitely missed ETN. If you didn't see, he got hurt pretty quickly and was taken out for the game. But they got by because Zay Jones had a career game of 11 receptions for 145 yards. Michael Hasty had five receptions for 67 yards and a touchdown. Agnew had a touchdown. Christian Kirk had four for 46. Impressive enough, the Jags still got this done, even though they only sacked Lamar Jackson one time. I hate Doug Peterson. I can't say it enough, but that man is very good when it comes to figuring a team out and just knowing how to batter the shit out of them. I know they didn't batter him for the win here. They won by one point, but he found out what worked and he didn't stop. Next game we had was the Vegas Raiders at the Seahawks. I'm not going to lie, I didn't watch a snap of this game other than the fact that I saw Josh Jacobs had 300 total yards. Carr had a very up and down day. Three touchdowns, two picks, 295 for passing. Josh Jacobs, 33 carries, 229 yards, two touchdowns. Devontae had seven for 74. And then Mac Hollins, Amir Abdullah, and Foster Moreau were the guys who all caught touchdowns. What the fuck? By the looks of it, I mean, Vegas was just on. And that's just wild because so was Seattle. Gino didn't have a bad day. Wandre Diggs had two interceptions. But I think what lost the game for Seattle was the shutdown performance of Kenneth Walker. He might have had two touchdowns. And any other day, those two touchdowns will be recognized as great. But several of the carries when he was not able to get anywhere is, you know, a loss of downs, a loss of yards. I feel like if he would have been able to get upfield more, that would have given Seattle more possession time and it would have given him a win. Next game we got was the Chargers at the Cardinals. <laughs> It's a rough week for the Herbert haters now, isn't it? 35 for 47, three touchdowns. He also had four rushes for 38 yards, extremely uncharacteristic. At least if you're asking me, I don't think I've ever seen him run before. And the receiving game continues to be the most ass backwards thing I've, I've ever seen. Keenan Allen's healthy, yet DeAndre Carter, Austin Eckler, Josh Palmer all had more productive days than him. Nobody did bad. Keenan had a touchdown, but like... As far as yardage goes, how the fuck are these guys getting more than Keenan? It don't make sense. Looking at Arizona, they actually didn't have a bad day. Kyler didn't do awful. James Conner had a career day for Arizona. 25 carries for 120 yards, actually doing something other than punching the ball in on the one. Diop had four for 87 and a touchdown. James had three for 20 and a touchdown on the receiving end. And even though their defense generated four sacks, it wasn't enough to stop Herbert's precision. Chargers got away by a point, and uh, honestly, they probably needed the win more than Arizona did. After that, we got the Saints and the 49ers, which was a blowout. Well, not really a blowout, just a shutout. The 49ers, I thought, would do better offensively, but they didn't let up a point. Andy didn't have much success. The run game had little to no success. Receiving game kind of got it going with Olave and Shahid. I saw had a great grab, but they didn't score. And honestly, their defense did nothing. The one good play I saw was by Tyron Matthew, but it ended up being a bobbled pass into a touchdown. Now, the 49ers, they, they, they were fine, but like I said, I expected them to do better. Jimmy won 26 for 37, 222 and a touchdown, zero turnover. The run game continues to split carries. McCaffrey getting the most, but uh, not finding the most success. Receiving, Ayuk had a good day. Debo was fine. Juwan Jennings had a really good day with a touchdown. But uh, Kittle and McCaffrey were actually pretty absent. Next game, this one was just awful. We'll talk about it for four seconds. It was the Rams at the Chiefs. Stafford might be done for the year. Allen Robinson, I think, is done for the year. Cup might be done for the year. Passing game was lousy. Running game was okay, but they didn't score. Van Jefferson got a touchdown, which was nice to see for the new number one. And the Chiefs were the Chiefs. Holmes did throw a pick, so it's possible. That's nice to see. Travis Kelsey, of course, had a touchdown. MVS had a decent day. Juju's back from his concussion. Couple interceptions on defense, a couple sacks. It was over before it started. 
And the last game we got to see on Sunday night was the Packers at the Philadelphia Eagles, and it was a really, really good game. Like I said, I had a funny feeling the Packers were going to win, but I didn't pick them, and I'm glad I didn't because they lost narrowly. People keep saying this might be the last time we see Aaron Rodgers in a Green Bay uniform because for those who didn't see it, he got hurt at the end of the game and Love came in actually looked pretty good. Uh, guys, uh, Rodgers is owed $50 million next year, like... <laughs> Someone's either going to have to take that or he's going to play there. Like, I don't think he's done. Uh, A.J. Dillon had a pretty good day. Aaron Jones had a pretty rough day. Christian Watson came alive at the end. Jones in the passing game was good with the touchdown. But sadly, their defense just could not stop anyone. They couldn't generate a turnover. They couldn't get a pick. And that's pretty crucial when you're either really close or trailing. Jalen Hurts' MVP campaign is only solidified more at this point. He had two more passing touchdowns, 157 more rushing yards. The guy is just unfair. Miles Sanders had 143 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns touchdowns. Kenneth Gainwell had a rushing touchdown. AJ Brown had a receiving touchdown. Quez Watkins had a receiving touchdown. Devontae Smith had four receptions for 50 yards. I mean, this team is seriously, they're just unstoppable. Well, I shouldn't say unstoppable. I think there's one team in the NFC that can stop them and that's San Francisco. But unless it's them, I don't think anyone's getting in their way. All right, guys, and that is all for my week 12 NFL reactions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. I do my absolute best to post on this channel every single day. With everything I just said, I'm gonna hop off and get this edited so you all can watch it on time. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week, and as always, I will see you in the next video.